Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic and welcome back to The Mandalorian. This time we're on season one, episode six, titled the title, uh, the chapter six, titled The Prisoner. Uh, last time we had The Gunslinger, starring our very own Disney princess, Ming-Na Wen. Um, I saw a post the other day that said, you know, now she's she's in, she's in been in the Disney universe, she's been in the Marvel universe, and now she's in the Star Wars universe too. She's just, she, she's just grabbing them where she can get them. She's just grabbing them where she can get them. Um, but it was great seeing her. She played Fennec Shand, uh, I think, like an ex-mercenary-ish type of character. Like, she worked for, like... I think, like, Warlords and shit before, like, you know, I think um, Mando mentioned... Who did he mention? He, I think he... He mentioned some names in the past, like, you know, so, like, characters who have showed up in the movies. Like, so, like, she she, she had worked for them in the past. She was, like, a, a warlord or something uh, along those lines. But she was she was a fighter. She was a hell of a fighter. Um, and a, a hell of a shot, too. Hell of a shot. So she was very, very good at um, surviving and stuff. Um, but we we're going up against them, and he, he had teamed up with Toro Calican, who was kind of like a, a bounty hunter in training. He really wanted to get into the guild, and capturing Fennec Shand was his ticket into the guild. Um... So, yeah, so he then enlisted the aid of um, of Mando, who showed up at a bar at a cantina looking, looking for work anyway, and then in the end he um, found out from Fennec just how big of a bounty was on Mando's head, along with Baby Yoda, so he thought taking them both back would get him that ultimate kind of title, the the ultimate reputation, because he, he didn't care about money, he wanted the reputation. Um, so Mando took him out in the end, and someone found Fennec. Fennec was shot and left in the desert by Toro, but someone actually walked up to her and found her. So I don't know what that means. I mean, I think if anything, it means that she's due to return in the future, because she wasn't really fully left for dead. Whoever found her would likely find a way to, you know, nurse her back to health. Um, so I guess we'll see. We'll see where that stuff uh, leads us. But yeah, we had Fennec Shand and Toro Calican. It was just a nice way to see Ming Na. It was a nice way to kind of see what would happen um, with, you know, I think, it, I think it was a good way to expand on the story so far in the sense that, you know, he can't really trust any bounty hunters, not the old ones he's worked with, not the new ones, not, not, not the ones trying to enter the scene newly now. So it's just him and Baby Yoda. And also, thingy, um... Gina Carano's character from episode four, yeah, it's just it's just him and you know if if she ever comes back, then it's her character too. But until uh, until then, it's just it's gonna it's just gonna be Mando and Baby Yoda, so no one else can be trusted. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much all I've got from the last one, so episode six, the prisoner. Let's go. Yeah, well, Mayfeld, he's he's one of the best trigger men I've ever seen. I hope he's not too Former trigger happy. Sharpshooter. Oh. That's not saying much. I wasn't a stormtrooper, <laughs> wise ass. <laughs> Don't take long. Though. I love them calling out their own <laughs> shit like that. I love it. <laughs> so this is a Mandalorian. Wait, is that? I thought they'd be bigger. Is that Clancy? Detroit's name is Zero. Is that Clancy? Is it Clancy Brown, the guy who plays Hank in Detroit, and SpongeBob? No, oh, this is a droid. Drive. It looks like a wasp's head, like, 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 like an insect's head. Calm. The eyes, the head shape. And the hyperdrive is only operating at 67.3% efficiency. We have much better ships. Why are we using this one? Yeah, and we need a ship that can get close I recognize the droid's voice code. too. So, I think. When we drop kind of. Hyperspace here. My response time is quicker. Organics. That's Richard Ayoade. Yeah, that's Richard oh, Ayoade. I knew I recognized that voice. Yeah. Forgive the programming. He's a little rough around here. <laughs> that's awesome. That's Will awesome. He's very, very fit for a droid. Very fit for a droid. Ask him about the job on Alzoc 3. Alzoc 3. I did what I had to. <laughs> oh, did he kill a bunch of people? Did he kill a bunch of people? See, I know who you really are. I wonder what you look like under there. Pedro Pascal. Handsome dude. Maybe he's Handsome a Gungan. How dare you? Why? You so don't want to show your face? <laughs> oh, I hope he gets his head blown off. Uh, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Baby Yoda! Yeah, don't you touch like him. That. Don't you touch him. Don't you touch him. Didn't take you for don't. the type. You drop him, I drop you into the cold vacuum of space. What the fuck are things you can mess around with Baby Yoda? What kind of things is she whispering in his ear? 
No. If Baby Yoda doesn't make it to the end of this episode safe and sound, I will personally. Mm. No, no, no. They are not screwing around with Baby Yoda on my watch. Okay, you might want to move Baby Yoda to another hiding spot before you leave, because they know what locker he's in now. You might want to move him somewhere. Yeah, trust me, you want to move him. You want to move him. Or not. Alright, we're on the clock. Oh. Forearms. Oh. It's a little monkey. A space monkey. No, Burke, what are you doing? What? Why? Just why? Just, just why? What, what was, like, why, why was that necessary? Oh, he circled round. He circled round. Oh. Oh, damn, okay. There we go. Oh, that is good. That is good. Oh, beheaded it right there and then. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that? Oh, it's the alarm. It's a tracking beacon. Oh. The press is that thing, we're all done. Okay, very different from the guild ones. We'll hone in on that signal and blow us all to hell. Oh, Put it down. okay. Are you serious? We're not here for you. We're here for a prisoner. If you let us go about our job, you can walk away with your life. No, we won't. Hey, hey can you please you stop with the trigger happiness? I think I care about Jesus. that? Jesus. We're not killing. Don't even. Oh. Yeah, and he just pressed it, didn't he? He pressed it as he fell down, yeah? Was that thing blinking before? I've... Was it? These for sake. For what? You only need five. This team is an absolute nightmare. This crew is an absolute freaking nightmare. <laughs> Okie dokie. Oh, it's another one like Jian. Quinn. Quinn. Funny. The man who left me behind is not my savior. Oh, okay. And no. Wait, what? No. Oh, call you son of a. Tax on the way. He's already dead meat. Let's go. Oh, and it's back on this way. You deserve this. Let's go. Yep, I knew there was a reason I never liked these people. I knew I there was a reason I never liked them. God, they're gonna do. They're gonna hurt Baby Yoda. Or just I don't know what they're gonna do. Oh, that was a good shot. That was a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. oh, that was good. Oh, the arm. The arm. It's the arm he needed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, open it from the inside. He has escaped. Yeah, you're all gonna die. You are all gonna die. If you leave him alive and double crossed, he will come back for you. He will come back for you. Oh. Oh! Baby Yoda. Curious. No. Oh, oh, okay, he's quick. <laughs> he's very quick. You are not shooting Baby Yoda. No. He sees a baby alien and his first instinct is to shoot it? Really? What about your sister? <sighs> what about her? <sighs> Starting to think there was a reason Mando left this guy behind. <laughs> Imagine if Baby Yoda had a gun. He was just holding like a little pistol of his own. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Oh no, but he's just terrified. He's terrified and playing hide and seek with Z. A very, very reluctant and conflicting game of hide and seek. Yeah, he's in the ceiling. He's in the ceiling. He's in the ceiling. He's in the ceiling. Oh, oh he pulls him through. Oh, he pulls him through the ceiling. Oh god. Oh, damn it. Oh. Oh. Burn his head. Burn his. Is he a demon of some kind? Just fire retardant. Oh, close the door on him. Oh. For real? For real? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that definitely would have killed him. Oh, she's got knives. She's got knives for days. Oh. 
Oh. Catch them and throw them back. Oh, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's good. Oh, that is good. That is horror movie style stuff. <laughs> that is very good. That is really cool. Come on, man. No, don't leave him alive. Reasonable. I say finish him off. I say finish him off. <coughs> he's not an honorable prisoner. Oh, he's gonna use the force. <laughs> Uh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Wait, look, there's a hand like, wait, I have that kind of power? I've unlocked force lightning, really? Hopefully we, ne we never return to this place or these people. They're all horrible. Kill him. What? No. No. What's this? Oh crap. Oh. Oh damn. Yeah. <laughs> the Republic is incoming. The new Republic is incoming. Oh yes. 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 There we go. <laughs> You can't double cross Mando. You can't do Mando like that. No. Oh, he didn't kill them. Okay, they're all prisoners then. He didn't kill them. Okay. Uh, I think he kind of should have. Because these guys are going to find out that Ran and the other guy are still alive. And that Mando set them up. So they're clearly going to come back for revenge. But I don't know. Whatever happens. Oh, that's a cool concept art, yeah. Okay, alright, yeah, um... Okay, so end of the episode. End of the episode. Um, yeah, no, so I, I feel like he should have killed them. I feel like he should, I think he, did, I thought he definitely should have killed them. I thought he did, because he closed the door on that one guy's head, and then he started to lift it back up again, so he closed it on, it on his frame, on his face. I thought that would have killed him. And then he would have gone, he would have killed, um... The um, the other guy, the backpack handgun guy, the backpack uh, blaster guy, and also um, Chian too. But no, he didn't. So I feel like he he should have killed them because once they if 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 they escape or whenever they're really I don't I don't know what kind of sentence they're going to be kept under because they're not original prisoners anyway. They they're not original prisoners. They, they, they weren't recorded. They weren't originally locked up. They were put in there by Mando. So when when whenever they get to being analyzed and shit. Um, I feel like they're either going to escape or they're going to be released or something, so I don't know, like, if and when that ever happens, they're going to find out that Ran and, and, um, and Jin are dead, um, and they were killed by the New Republic attackers, and that, you know, that could only mean that, you know, they were given the, um, the beacon without realising what it was, so then they're going to know that Mando was involved and they're going to go after him, so, yeah, um, but as, as an episode, this was fun. This was a fun episode. It was good to see. It was good to see a bit more of Mando's past outside of being a Mandalorian itself. Like you know, his Mandal him being a Mandalorian is you know what makes up most of his reputation. Like him being that kind of a fighter, that kind of a soldier almost. Um, but yeah, no, it was like seeing this crew he had. This crew he had. So I think he probably you know he became a successful qualified Mandalorian if there's such a thing. He he became a proper Mandalorian and then he ran with this crew and then he left this crew. So. For whatever reason, he left this crew, um, and yeah, but then Chin, Chin was the guy who, who held a grudge, he was the one that got left behind at their last mission, and he was the prisoner that they, they were tasked with actually retrieving again, um, but yeah, so I think they, 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 they had Clancy Brown, they had Clancy Brown playing the, the devil guy with the horns, I recognised him uh, for a few seconds, um, yeah, I think most recently I, I I saw him in um I saw like I've I've seen like playthroughs of Detroit Become Human, so I've seen him in that, and he's also otherwise um he's a, a voice actor on SpongeBob. He is uh, Mr. Krabs, um and he's in a, in a bunch of other stuff too. He's a really really talented actor, a talented actor, um so it was him, and then uh, Natalia Tina played uh played uh Chien. I recognised her from a couple of places. Um, we had Richard Iowade at that one. 
that one hit me earlier, but it took me a lot longer to actually register. Like, you know, is it actually him? Like, I recognize it. Like, the voice, it seems like, you know, someone who would actually fit for a drug. I thought, for a second, I thought, you know, is it the guy from, um, that guy from, like, the, the, the newer James Bond movies, the guy who plays the, the scruffy nerd, like, the, the I think, is it Q? I don't know. I've never watched James Bond. I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what their actual agent you know, initials are but that guy played B- Ben Wishaw played by Ben Wishaw I, th- I thought I thought it was him for a second and then I was like listening closer like no I recognize that voice that's that, that's an actor I've actually you know watched enthusiastically and it's like oh Richard Ayoade yeah I, I recognize him um but the others I don't really know who played them um like the backpack shooter guy I forgot his name I didn't even write that down the backpack shooter guy I think he um, I, I felt like I recognized his actor but I don't know. I'm not. I can't be too sure. And then the guy who played Shin, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't recognize him either. But yeah, it was. It was. It was a cool crew. A cool crew. I think the actors did a great job. The actors themselves did a great job. And like the characters themselves, you hate them almost instantaneously. Um, you know, like the 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 backpack blaster guy, especially he gives off a very very cocky kind of, you know, um, sort of like you know like out of control trigger happy kind of dude. Like you know, he, he's he's the trigger finger, but he also has a happy trigger finger. So. Yeah, uh, the one cool thing about him is the fact that he has that backpack handgun, the one that just comes out and he can just shoot extra stuff. So I don't, I don't know how he controls that, but he has that backpack, so that's so useful. Um, but yeah, this is the crew that Mando not only worked with, but he also left. He left them, and clearly he left them, you know, in like de- like a dismissible, like a dismissive way. Like he didn't really leave saying goodbye. Maybe you're. Or maybe he left after they were in some heat or during the heat. Um, so they, 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 they kind of hold a grudge against him for that. I mean, it was only Ran, Chin, and um, Chien, and Thingy. Um, wait, no. No, hold on. It was Ran was a member, and Chin was a member, and Chien was a member. Yeah. Clancy's character and the droid, they were all new ones. They, 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 they were new members. So they, they, they weren't aware of, what, of like what his reputation was when he was when, when he was with his crew. Um, so I'm not sure if they knew everything or if they just knew whatever biased story that you know the 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 that Rand told them. But I mean, I mean, I say biased. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you get left by your team member, there is only really one version of the story you can tell. Like you know, he left without probably without much explanation but i think it was definitely a darker time it was definitely a darker time like you know when um when jian told the crew like you know i'll ask him what happened on um Alzoc 3 and then and then, then mando was just like i did what i had to do you can just tell some dark shit went down like you know he killed a bunch of people maybe a bunch of droids like you know he was clearly like a, like a you know like like the, the most efficient and effective and you know most terrifying mandalorian at that time so you know seeing stuff then um, or like you know, just hearing about stuff. Then it shows it shows you how far he's come. That you know, like he like you know, at, at one point he was just like a like a maybe you know like a mercenary level hunter. Then he became a bounty hunter. Like you know, it was probably after he left the crew that he actually went into bounty hunting. So you know, it's, it's, instead of killing people, you know, it, instead of having only the option to kill people, he actually you know gave them the option to actually bring people in too. Like that was his opening line. Like you know, I can bring you in warm or I can bring you in cold. So he wanted like a different line of work that still suited his skill set. Um, and then, of course, he did that for years, and then now, when 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 we literally open up the show, he's given this one of a kind bounty to hunt, the one bounty he can't bring himself to kill, the one bounty, and instead he spends the entire show protecting it with his life. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in in that sense, it was a very very fun episode, like fun to see him reunited with like an old group of people that are clearly clearly not morally you know, agreeable people, not morally agreeable characters, but they're well written in that sense, and the actors do a great job of pulling them off too. Um, but yeah, I do think he should have killed them, because otherwise, once they get out and they find out what happened, they're going to be back with a vengeance. Um, I mean, who knows how long that is, unless they escape, unless they escape, unless they manage to craft some kind of escape plan, um, and then go straight after Mandalorian. But yeah, no, like as, as soon as they found out about Baby Yoda, as soon as they found out about Baby Yoda, I had my suspicions. I was like, okay, no, like especially that one guy who's eyeing him, like eyeing Baby Yoda, like you know, oh, I never had a pet before, but now I think I actually might give it a try. Um, and then he even pre- pre- he even pretended to drop him as well. Like that was just a dick. Like these, like yeah. And as soon as they were like you know, um, like like writers, um, writers, Mando was getting ready to open up the the the, the hatch and stuff. You know, um, G- um, Gian was whispering into the other dude's ear, and they were, and you know the guy was looking back at the door. So I, I I knew at that point 
they had plans for Baby Yoda. I knew at that point they had plans for Baby Yoda, and I, I figured, you know, oh, you know what, like, you know, and, and then it made more sense when they actually pushed him back into the cell and locked him up after after they rescued the other prisoner. So, you know, it makes sense that, you know, like, once they then got back to the ship, they just do whatever the hell they wanted with Baby Yoda, like, probably kill him, or, you know, like, do something else. I don't know. I don't know, but I had no good feelings about it. And then, of course, the droid, Zero, Zero, he just... He sees a baby alien. His first instinct is to grab the gun and you know take aim at it. That's his first instinct. Like he was curious because he had like you know he he'd begun to interpret the message from Grief Karga on um, from way back when on, on on the system. And then he sees Baby Yoda. And then you know I think I mean I, I guess the the subtext there is that you know he definitely he definitely did put two and two together and realized that you know um, the Mandalorian was a bounty hunter. He he you know he had like a he he had a, an asset that he was meant to de- deliver to a client. But instead, he didn't probably, or you know, now, now, now there's a baby on his ship, so I don't know. But either way, he was looking for the baby and he was gonna kill him. So I mean, yeah, is it, 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 this crew is dysfunctional as hell, and it, they're they're just really untrustworthy. They're just really really untrustworthy. They just you know, if they get the chance, if they get the chance and they spot an opportunity, they will put you down. They will kill you. And I'm surprised they haven't done done it to each other already. But then Mando in this in, in this context in this in this version of the story Mando is the one who actually left them behind so they they're holding a bigger uh, they're holding a bigger grudge together towards him <coughs> than than they are against each other so yeah um but i mean chin was getting ready to leave his sister behind like you know he was getting ready to leave his sister behind as long as he was able to escape so he's clearly just the worst of them all um but yeah, may- may- maybe that's why he left them behind maybe that's why Mando left them behind he saw that you know the, the group as a whole was you know, troubling, and they, 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 they were dodgy as hell, but then Jin was the worst of them, he was the worst of them, he was the one influencing all of this, so, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but, um, but they're all prisoners now, and, yeah, towards the end of it, towards, like, the second half of the episode, like, the second, third act, like, there was, like, a, like, once Mando escaped, and he, he was actually trapping all the others in there, 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 there was, like, a really, like, a really nice, like, kind of horror atmosphere to everything, and, like, like the cinematography, especially, like, that shot, of um of the backpack blaster dude looking down the hallway being blocked off and everything and the light the light flashing on and off like in like in horror movies when you know the, the light flashes on you see them for a second the next time it doesn't happen and then the next time it, each time it gets closer and closer and closer like that was a really really cool shot that was a really cool shot and just just that whole atmosphere of them actually being separate like I I thought he was just gonna lock them all up trap them in the ship and then leave the ship and wait for the Re- Republic to come because the because the um the beacon was there anyway, so I thought I thought he was just gonna you know leave the ship and then wait wait, wait for the Re- Republic to reach the the prisoner carrier, but no, he actually locked them up and then took the prison carrier and took it to Rand because Rand was the Rand was the source of all this, so taking him out meant taking out the leader. Um, but yeah, that whole atmosphere was really good, like him actually like not just trapping them in the ship but actually separating them from each other too. Um, that was really good. Um, but yeah, it was a fun episode, a great, uh, great cast of characters, a great kind of, um, chemistry with them, um, nice bit of, exp- n- 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 nice bit of, like, exploration into his past without actually going into his past, like, just bringing the past back to him, like, I think, I think he, he docked, the, he docked at this place knowing what was there, he docked at this place because he knew it was run by Ran, um, so he needed, like, a place to lay low, I think it was, I think, I can't, I think, I forgot to turn on my subtitles at the beginning, so I forgot why he actually landed there to begin with, um, but yeah, I think it was just probably like a, like a, like a, a docking station while while, while 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 he was waiting, and maybe he could just take on take on a mission or two while he was there as well. But in, in this case, this one had more waiting for him than he realized. So yeah, just more trust issues, more trust issues. But then again, if you if I think I think if you know or if 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 you have some kind of idea that you know the the group you used to run with is holding a grudge against you, you can kind of expect there to be some kind of beef. You can expect there to be some beef there, but. I don't know. Either way, he's okay now. He's okay now. So we'll see what happens next time. But yeah, that shot, <laughs> that shot of Baby Yoda being back in his little, in his little enclosed space, and he just you know before Zero takes aim, he just you know starts trying to use the force and everything. He's trying to see if he can actually take him out with the force, and then and then and then all of a sudden like like a laser shot just takes Zero out, and Baby Yoda's like. Holy crap, I have that kind of power already, and no, no, Mando was at the back, he shot the guy down. That was amazing, that was hilarious. Like, you know, Baby would be like, have I unlocked, like, a new level or, like, a new tier of force sensitivity, and am I now, for like, can I, can I do force lightning now? Like, is that is that my kind of power? 
I wish. Like I, I thought, you know, you know, him opening up the um. I thought when Zero opened up the the gun lock, I thought you know he'd probably see like something missing, or maybe we as the audience would notice that something was missing. And then as as we saw Baby Yoda peeking around the corner, we just see him holding like a rifle, like a, like a pistol that's basically a rifle for him because it's too big. That would have been cool if we just saw him holding like a blaster or something that in his hands looks like a massive rifle, and he just hides there as well. But no, I don't I don't know if he's strong enough to hold a blaster. But that would have been cool. But this one was even cooler. This one was funnier. This one was funnier. Him actually using the force to try and take Zero out and then just, you know, um, Zero getting blasted out of the way. That was cool. That was fun. Um, but yeah, I think not enough Fabi Yoda in this. I, I, I was kind of worried when, 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 when we didn't see him in the beginning and stuff. And then by the time we do see him is when we actually start to get worried because that's when the, the entire crew finds out that Baby Yoda's on the ship and stuff like that. And, you know, he's hard, and, you know Mando is harboring a baby on the ship. So then, you know, it, like uh, 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 amongst themselves, they, 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 they all start crafting the sneaky little plan to take out Mando and then do whatever they will with Baby Yoda. But I don't know. I, I'd, I'd hate to think what they do with Baby Yoda once they got back on the ship after trapping Mando in the cell. I'd hate to think of what they actually decided to do with Baby Yoda. But I don't know. I don't know. He's safe now. Mando is not going to go down that easily. You know, he's not. Um, he's not going to let anything happen to Baby Yoda. So we can rest easy knowing that much. Um, but yeah, it was a fun thing. It was a fun episode, good cinematography, good atmosphere towards the end of it. It was a nice kind of build-up, nice way to actually, you know, like, introduce these characters and stuff and explore his past. Um, yeah, fun stuff, uh, all in all. But that is pretty much all I've got from this one. It was good to see the, the, the New Republic again, the New Republic. I think these ones looked, um, you know... A bit more like resistance members, like 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 we saw in the Force Awakens, like the orange and the white and stuff. You know, them coming along and just taking out the entire ship. That was a good ending. That was a good ending. Like you know, um, Ryan Ryan thinking he had the upper hand by like you know like um calling out the the gunship to take out Mando, but then you know um thingy uh Jin finding out that he had the tracking beacon on him and Ryan immediately recognizing what that is and then finding out oh he actually double crossed us. He you know just set the Republic onto us instead. So yeah, seeing that ship go down was fun. Um, but yeah, so that yeah, that is definitely all I have from this one. So fun stuff. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Uh, but yeah, that is all I've got. So that was the Mandalorian season one, episode six, chapter six, titled "The Prisoner." So thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think is coming up next in the Mandalorian. Uh, the uncut reaction is up on Patreon, so you can go check that out there. And yeah, that's it. So, I will see you guys next time.